Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Three Martini Lunch. My name is Jay Izzo, and I'm surrounded by some of the most talented, most successful business people, thought leaders in our great country. They are amazing. They will be serving up their libations throughout the course of the day, letting you have their treats and their thoughts and so that they can share with you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the lead singer of the Three Martini Lunch. She is part of Rock star connect ladies and gentlemen it is sarah elliott thank you jay that i love your introductions that makes me feel like i'm like turning colors can you see i'm like a little pink (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome thank you so today um we have an interesting question that steven and i came up with and by the way steven is recovering he is doing better we are on the road to 100 health um you know, it's a slowly but surely silly thing that we've just been dealing with. So we hope to see him back in the three Martin lunch soon, but it'll be sooner than later. Anyway. So I was thinking today about past, present, and future. And I wanted to ask you guys, let me pull it up because I wrote it out. Okay. So my question for today is what social group did you belong to when you were young? And if you did, And has that changed for you as an adult? And then how do you think that shaped how you fit into the world? So if you were an athlete when you were a kid, did you continue doing your fitness regime or regimen? Not regime, goodness gracious, as you, you know, grew into adulthood or um, did you become a couch potato? So for my lovely introduction, Thank you, Jay. I would love for, because we spoke about this briefly on the intro, I would love to hear your take on this. And then I would love to have you wrap us all up at the end too. I'll be happy to do that. So I, I said to you, and I will tell everybody, I was an eclectic, right? So I went to college on three scholarships, uh, football, uh, singing, and acting. Uh, If you notice, none of those were academic uh, at all. Uh, and so I was always kind of that eclectic person. I did go to graduate school to work on my master's and doctorate in psychology, right? And then have 15 hours of, of statistics in graduate school, graduate stats, and taught stats in college and, and graduate students, tutored graduate students in statistics. So I have this weird eclectic connection with all sorts of people, which has served me well. But it, am I still in that? I don't know what group I was in. And that was part of the problem because I never knew what group I was really in. I never was the, that person that was like, oh, I'm just the jocks, right? Or um, I'm the actors or I'm the singers or I'm the academians. I never was that. I, was, I just always fit in somewhere, somehow. Um, and sometimes it was more difficult than others because people view you differently depending on that group. Because if I was in the acting group, they hated athletes. Yeah. Right. So if I was in the singing group, they didn't like the actors or the, you know, because they were competing and they didn't like the actors or the athletes, the athletes. So, and if I was an athlete, if I was in the athlete group, you know, well, you know, you're probably one of them, you know, and we don't want you to be one of them, whatever them is. Right. When I got into the, in the present, I would say it's still a lot the same. You know, I fit into a number of different groups. I'm, I feel like, uh, Clint, you can verify this. I feel like I'm pretty easy to talk to and that I can relate pretty easily to most folks and do not, um, can, can get into your world. I mean, you talked about string theory. My God, you talked about <laughs> string theory, but you do, I'm okay with it. Actually, that's a fun with you on it. In the future, how did this help me serve me? Well, it served me tremendously well. Um, I mean, look at what I do. I coach, right? I mean, all sorts of people uh, from all different backgrounds, um, wide diversity of folks from athletes to uh, business owners, executives, entrepreneurs. So I do that. I have a radio show podcast that's in 91 countries around the world, right? So that serves me pretty well. Um, I do have, I do speak a second language and and learning a third because I'm learning Hebrew right now. So that- What's your second language? Italian. Really? Yeah. Interesting. 
Interesting. I didn't know you spoke Italian. Yeah, I do. I speak and read Italian. Yeah. 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 And then, <laughs> odd. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> odd. Uh, well, that's why I called Joey Natale, right? Remember? Right. Because it means, it, means, uh, it means nativity is what it means in, in uh, Italian is Natale's nativity. And so, you know, and then, of course, I have to call Joey Natale without the E. So there's that, uh, but it's, uh, but from, from a, where's it shaped me? Well, it's really shaped me because it's allowed me to um, not be afraid to go into groups, even if I'm not known, or even if I'm not comfortable, I've never, I can, I'm the guy in the elevator who talks to you and you don't know him. That that's who I am. Right. My wife, my wife just, 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 she just shakes her head. We go into an elevator, a bunch of people in the elevator. I am striking up a conversation with the lady in the corner. Right. I, I'm like, hey, how are you? She's looking at me at six foot five going, uh, good, 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 good. Yeah. Have a Jay, good day. You and I were in an elevator together. The elevator ride would never end because I am uh, the same kind of person. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's that's kind of how it's kind of shaped me. And uh, I've always been, I've always been a little bit of a risk taker, well, actually, a lot of a risk take. Um, you know, people don't know this. It came from a town of 119 people in Nebraska and just never fit in exactly there, even though I was a farmhand, wanted to do more. And so that took me to other places and, and moved. And I've lived in Washington state. I've lived in North Carolina. I've lived in Nebraska. So I've lived from coast to coast. So I think it served me well. And I have a genuine love for all people of different, different backgrounds. It just doesn't matter to me. I, because I've, I've been able to be so, it's been so cool to um, do what I did to be able to be that way. And as some people say, well, that's kind of a chameleon. I never felt that way. I never felt like a chameleon. I felt like it was just, just genuinely curious. I'm with you on the genuine curiosity. I, I think I've always had a genuine curiosity about other people. In fact, I have this book. It's called The Secret Language of Birthdays. And it used to be like available in Barnes and it's probably still available in Barnes and Nobles, but I've had this copy for, I don't know, 20 years. And every time I remember it and I'm around somebody, I have them read their birthday date and sign it. So like almost every page now has a signature on it. And my day is the day of human observation. Funny enough, huh. <laughs> I just watch everyone. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing it? Yeah, people watching is awesome. It is. Yeah. It is. It's one of my <laughs> secret pleasures. Like, why, what are they doing? And why are they doing it? <laughs> Which makes you draw some weird conclusions about life, I think. If you don't ask, yeah. hi, what yeah. are you doing? And why are you doing it? <laughs> right. I think one of my favorite things is to go into a bar, sit on the side. My wife and I have done this. And we make up the stories about the people talking at the bar. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Right. Or you know, the, the, the single, the single guy trying to pick up on the single girls. Right. And we're making, I'm making up the lines and she's making up the lines of what she's saying back. Right. You know, and, you know, and, and because I know we both, we both had been single, you know, before. So we, we've heard, we've, I've either said all the lines or she's heard all the lines. So, right. So <laughs> that's, that's a lot of fun. I think that's a good time too. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate your input there. Miss Lisa, what social group did you belong to when you were young and has it changed for you as an adult? And then how does you think it shaped how you fit in the world? So yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. So you know, I belong to a bunch of different social groups. Um, and, I, and it's funny because I never really considered that I belonged to a social group. Just different things interested me at different times. I was always our kids in class and so I was always hanging out with those guys except I didn't always hang out with those guys and then there were people that were really interested in music and so we did that and then there was the oh my god I used to love to hang out at the library and so Barnes and Noble is my library of today can't wait till they bring the comfy chairs back and then you know I played softball and then just so many I used to hike all the so I always belong to so many different things because so many different things interested me that, well, as you guys talked about that compelling curiosity. 
And then as an adult, I would just, a lot of you might not know, my dad was in the military. So I was a military brat and we lived all over the world when I was a kid. And so we moved every couple of years. And so there's always a bunch of new people, always a bunch of new experiences. You know, what's the music like here? What are the, what do you guys do for fun here? Even, even how do you say soda here? And um, so has it really, has that changed? still belong everywhere. And then how has it shaped me? You know what? I absolutely love people who geek out on whatever they geek out on. And it it just fuels so much passion, so much joy. And I learn so much from listening to other people's stories. And it serves me very well in uh, what I do now as a coach and a healer. It serves me really well. Thank you. That's a great question. Thanks. Um, so the pot versus soda thing, and I really appreciate your input. I can see you belonging to all, all of, I have to tell you the first time I heard pop, I was 16 years old. I lived in, this is why I remember this Mm -hmm. McDonald's. I was 16 and we stayed after and everybody had to wait, leave with the manager at the end. And so at that point in time, we were allowed one soda when, uh, you know, the rules were very strict. And so I grew up thinking it was soda. And the woman, the manager kept asking me, we had to wait a little longer if I wanted to pop. I honestly thought she was asking permission to hit me. (laughs) She said soda pop. Then I got it. I'm looking at her like, what is this woman really asking if she can hit me? So I still say soda or soda pop. (laughs) I saw a little blurb. I don't know, recently when it got really cold down here, maybe the last week or the week before. And it said, all you Southerners who leave soda in your garage or in your car now understand why us Northerners call it pop. (laughs) Exactly. I never heard that before. That makes sense. (laughs) I thought that was hilarious. So I love it. Speaking of Northerners, Adam. To our very north, our very northern neighbor. Hi, Sarah. How are things? Oh, things are really heating up up here. I don't know if you guys see what's going on with the truckers. And if if you haven't, you look on my Facebook. I I put on a lot of neutral stuff. Of course, I'm all for freedom. But it's really interesting. And in, in, in the two forms of government here are not working together. So it's it's really uh it, it's a it's a monumental moment in history. So yeah, don't don't miss out on seeing what it is. It is. We've been watching it with open eyes and bated breath, honestly, because uh, one side counters the other, and moves are made, and we just go, oh my gosh, yeah. How can you know this rises up and then it's and I just it's amazing, but we're waiting, I think, for our major cities to face the same events that you guys are having there. Depending on the outcome here, you may or may not see a lot of it. And it it really melds well with today's question, you know, what social group do you belong to? Uh, Because there's some clear divisions up here, very, very clear. And like Jay was saying before, the the artists don't like the athlete. These, yeah, there's, there's some real bad blood between these people. And what's, what's, what's coming out of it. Uh, so I'm interested to see what it is in this side. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of freedom, whatever that looks like, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of freedom. Um, I think and, all and of us are with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Americans uh, most of the time are, there's a few that really contradict what's going on and they're in, they're in favor of, of regulation. They're in favor of everybody wear a mask. Cause you know, the, you can hear the fear in their, in their voices um but that's the key yeah the fear is the key i lived in fear when i was uh when i was young um kind of like lisa and i went to different city city five years in a row i went to a different school so i literally had no friends literally had all all my good friends from my earlier years are gone okay so i used my athletic ability to meet people okay we we had we had a we had a game they called kill the man with the ball okay yeah. Okay. So I'd get to, I'd get to a school. I would just run people over. Jay, you know how you tackle people who have the ball? I, I yeah, take you ball big and, guys. Yeah. I take the yeah. ball. And go when and you're small, it's over. not so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't one of the big guys. 
Oh, is there another name for that? Yeah. Is it like dodgeball, tag ball, something? Australian you know, rules football or rugby. Oh, yeah, okay. it's kind of like rugby, but all against one. If you got the ball, everybody's coming to get you. So that's how I met people. Um, you know, when I when I got a little older in high school and I got a little more established, I was in Stevens Group. Um, but I was in all of them. I I, I participated in athletics. Um, you know, academia was one of my strong parts. So you know, I was in some of the some of the upper classes with with that. But you know, we played Jewish geography. I was in a high school fraternity called Three Twenty Two which is AZA, which is Stephen was a part of. So he and I can go for hours. We, we went to school like three miles from each other. Right. At the same time. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty wonderful. But I was not. It's amazing that you guys hadn't met at that point, because you probably would have been fast friends. You know, we, prob- we probably did meet. Um, yeah. yeah, we probably did a couple of times based on what was going on there. Um, but I wasn't a chameleon. I was authentic. No matter where I, what group I went to, I was me. If Mm -hmm. I was with the athletes, you know, I I still participate in other groups, but I was an athlete at that moment. And if I was another group, you know, I was accepted with them. Um, You know, I grew up in high school in the, in, in in South Florida in the eighties. So there were a lot of drugs in the school. Even the students did some too. So, so I got to part (laughs) I got to participate in that side as well. And that was an, a, an experience. I, luckily, luckily, I never got, you know, too far down that, that hole, but I could be with all those people. And that's really a, a, a how it worked for me is it created a marketing strategy. And what I taught people, I, I taught people to go where you're the only one in your industry and everybody else is your client. Okay. You don't know how many people I set up to sponsor the Real Estate Association of South Florida. They sell to real real estate agents, okay? But they're not real estate agents. So we go in and there's four or five of us. We have the calendar booked all year because we each get to, to, to speak twice. And it's everybody who I recruited. We had this little niche of um, outsiders who supported the, the industry. And I did that my whole, my whole career. Um, my daughter was in high school. She was a cheerleader. We would go in and speak to the football team how to be a gentleman, how to be a man, all these elements that these, these kids are not getting if they don't have a father. Okay. So these are the types of roles that I I've played in my life. And I've really, um, I really embraced it. Uh, they recruited me to be a part of the Florida power team for Tony Robbins. And I just ended up leading that group for four years and just made remarkable results of being able to talk to anybody in any industry. Mm-hmm. And that's what my business is today. I do the I do the, the cards, I do the digital branding cards, and it doesn't matter what industry it is, what geographical area, I connect with everybody. There's something we all have in common. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to having a conversation with Joey and Lisa for the first time. Never really met you guys, but now that I'm on the other side of what I had to go through, uh, yeah, let's definitely connect and see how I can integrate in your world as well. I'm so glad to hear you're on the other side of it. Yeah. It's, it, it's a beautiful position and uh, it may bring me down to South Florida before it's all done, but mentally and emotionally, I'm, I'm through that era. You know, you need to stop in North Carolina if you do end up coming down South. You know, I, I stopped on the way up and I had a really good time. You might not be able to get rid of me if I stop again. Come on down. Got it. I'm Come bringing on. my own Sarah though. Okay. Okay. Sarah's of all kinds are welcome. <laughs> as long as they spell it right. No, wait, she does it. Does she spell it with an H? No. No, she spells it Canadian. Okay. Well, any spelling then. I'll make with it. With a C? <laughs> Without an H. Oh, okay. She spells it L O V E. Right. There you go. There you go. So, um, as I'm reading, thank you, Adam. Thank you. I can see, you know, I think, I think if before we continue this conversation, I would be willing to wager. Speaking of wager, I'm going to see him tomorrow, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the little one. <laughs> yeah. Um, the little one. And, and my daughter's middle name is Sarah. That's amazing. That's and you amazing. get to meet Joey too. 
I'm so excited. It's very exciting. I'm so excited. So uh, I would be willing to wager that the, the most of us in this group, and I think we've all come together as adults because of this, are along the same vein of, I wasn't really in any particular group. I went from group to group to group, and I had various interests, and now I get along with everybody. So, Ray, am I right? Was that you too? So I was, uh, like Lisa, I was a military brat. Mm-hmm. And it was it was very interesting um, because I lived both on and off military bases throughout the United States and in different countries. So mm-hmm. growing up, I lived in Virginia, and um, I don't exactly know how it worked, but I but uh, growing up in a one community for your entire life. Um, I see, you know, what I see in the movies and on TV, kids grow up and they're, uh, uh, they have a certain social group that they hang out with and then they get to uh, high school and it changes or it can change or whatever. Uh, when you're moving every three years, you're the, growing up in, I mean, not growing up, growing up in Virginia versus going to say, for example, middle school and high school in Germany, very different because sure. I, um, Uh, I hung out with American kids, of course, but I also, my mom was German, so I spoke some German, and so I also hung out with the German kids. So culturally, it was very, very different. Then I went to the University of Miami, um, which, and the only reason I mentioned that is because Miami, for me, was really a big city compared to what I've grown up with. Uh, Miami and Florida, not not Ohio, right? Florida, yes. Okay. (laughs) Go a Miami U, right? No. I, um, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> there's another Miami. There's not a Miami. Miami. University of Miami, Florida. Go Canes. Yeah, um, University of Miami, Ohio. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. I thought it was in Ohio. Okay. But I'm making And then um, one of the things that was interesting is uh, being in college in the 80s in Miami in a, a predominantly Cuban uh, area, I mean, uh, t- not area, but the folks I, ha- I hung out with were mostly Cubans. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I speak Spanish or anything. It's just, that's just the way it worked out. Mm-hmm. And, um, so those are, that was my social group is social groups. It frequently changed. And as you mentioned, um, I really didn't change. I think, um, uh, I think either I gravitated towards people or People gravitated towards me. I um, I did play sports when I was younger, um, and uh, uh, and I think that had a little bit to do with it. Um, when I when I was in college, I I met some folks that, and I when I said small, I mean I was, you know, 125 pounds, maybe 120 pounds, um, and you know, still five eight, five seven, whatever. Uh, so I, I ran into people you're a that, <laughs> pardon? Let's say you were a beanpole. Yeah, really. I was super skinny. Um, and then, but I, there were people like Jay, a friend of mine specifically named Joey, um, that were bigger than me. And they always liked picking on the little guy. So, I, and I would fight back. I mean, well, you know, would it not fight, but we I'd wrestle right back. They thought they would just, take me. And it, yes, I frequently found myself in, uh, on the ground or in the hatchback portion of a car because there were three of us in only two seats and they threw me in there, but, um, <laughs> it's a true story. Um, but, uh, I'm laughing because I've been there too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but it was, it was, am I part of that social group now? I would say Less so now, less now than I was before. Uh, but I don't think it has to do with my social group. It's the community I'm in. Hmm. Not Sacramento, California, but real estate. I don't work in an office. Um, I don't get out as much as I used to. So I tend to 
um, which is okay because I my youngest sibling was actually seven years older than me, who also lives in Charlotte, by the way, and um, didn't want anything to do with me. So I was kind of like an only child. I kind of how I grew up. So I spent a lot of time on my own and I, I have to take myself and go out. It was one of the things about Rockstar Connect that actually intrigued me because I, you know, we, I get to essentially go someplace, have a drink and talk to a bunch of different people, which is kind of exciting and very interesting. So it's my whole lifeblood. Like I, that's how my social, so sociability, sociality, so socialness. <laughs> survives <laughs> it's going out and talking to people because you can't it's not like you can go and i mean especially when like everybody's required to wear a mask or anything it's not like you can walk up to somebody and be like hey nice shoes how are you like i love your shirt how you do it because it's it prevents like a lot of that social interaction where you would innately like go interact with somebody you can't it's like your half of your face is not there so to be able to like have drinks with people and have them come up to you with an interest of like, Hey, we share the same interest in that. We are both here together networking, at least if there's nothing else in common, right. That's our first commonality um, is, is it, I agree with you. It's really nice. And that is why we are still here. Yeah. Through hell and high water. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like it's necessary for like everybody everybody and you, me, and, and everybody included. I mean, it just is so revitalizing to get out in front of people, especially for those of us that work from home and those of us that, that are a little isolated. I mean, you have to get around people. You have to, you have to. So thanks, Ray. And I'm very excited to see your grandbaby tomorrow. Like babies are my favorite people. And I'm so excited. (laughs) Right. Lisa agrees with me. She's like, yes. Babies are my favorite people. Because so I've like- been to North Carolina twice to see the kids. Mm-hmm. But and my dad lives there too. So, but I'm there for a very short period of time. I don't get to do anything. You know, I'm one day with my dad, then I from Charlotte and my sister, and then I drive mm-hmm. to uh, the Raleigh area, and I'm with my daughter and uh, son-in-law and grandkids just like overnight, and then I drive back. I need to make arrangements to spend more time there. So. Yeah, you do. I can pop in and you see you. Come hang out with us. We're in. And I know somebody there has a bar in their house. Who is that? I'm gonna find them sooner or later. Yeah, I don't know who might have a bar, a whole bar in their house that is well stocked with whiskey. Gee, I think you might have to come down, right? Because you know what? I just got acquired from a good friend of ours who's down in Florida, actually. Um, a bottle of Glantons and a bottle of King George V. So I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm sure that's whiskey. It is whiskey. It's bourbon. Yeah. yeah. I'll be over at five. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about the King George. Really, like I, that's gonna have to be open on a special occasion because it's so it's a Johnny Walker blend, but it's a blend that's been in distiller, like in. Let me get it right. The mash bills have been in production or were in production at the time of King George of Italy. So before Elizabeth, right. So it's like 120 year old mash that they are now creating whiskeys out of. And so it's a still a blend, still a Johnny Walker blend, but it is a like blend. And I'm very excited about it. (laughs) it, I'm I'm super stoked about it, but I'm gonna have to find, like it's gonna have to be like I, I don't even know it's gonna tempt us to open that. Like it might just sit on my shelf for a while until yeah, right? You're gonna have to come and make your presence known here and be our special guest, and we'll have to open it. I, I have to bring presents. No, <laughs> just your presence, your physical aura. You have to come hang out. <laughs> so speaking of physical auras, speaking of physical auras, Clint, who has a magnetic physical aura, <laughs> Clint, who drains batteries while people are, while he's around them. Yeah, that's a Clint, true story. I know, I know. So how were you when you were a kid? Did you fit into a group? Did you fit, still fit into that same group? Are you a chameleon? Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> the answer so, is yes. I was, I played um, in middle school. Um, I played, uh, played tennis and I continued playing tennis a little bit through high school, but I was more focused on the cultural arts in high school. So I was in a, it was in an acapella group called the Acapellas. I was Ooh. in a gospel group called a different image. And I was in a, a honors magical group who won a national contest. We marched in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 1997. So I kind of did a little bit of everything and I was friends with everybody. So I was that go between. Right. So I was the one that, that, you know, made it easier for people to get along. And I never I never had friends in one social group. And that that stays true today. And it's hel- it helped me because like getting up and singing in front of people. I don't know who in this group has done that um, besides apparently Jay. Um, but it is. At first, it's terrifying and exhilarating. And afterwards, you just have this, you know, sense of euphoria. You know, I mean, it's it's great. Um, and I still do karaoke today, um, and I still play tennis. I still play golf. I still play softball. I will. I go to the gym. I run four or five days a week. So I still fit into those same categories. Um, but it just gave me those things. Gave me the confidence to be able to walk into a room, like Jay was saying, talk to somebody on an elevator, and my daughter and my wife also roll their eyes when we're sitting at dinner or something and I'll call the waitress or waiter by their name and they're like why do you have to do that like people it's people's favorite thing to hear literally people's favorite thing to hear is their name so you are taught in sales to say somebody's name three times during a conversation right and it is it's just one of those things that people that people not they not, not that they have to hear hear but it's everybody's love language is hearing your own or hearing your own name And so, you know, just it gave me the confidence to be able to talk to anybody in any situation um, and lighten the mood. You know, as we talked about, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, last time we did this, my defense mechanism is humor. Right. And that's the way that I disarm a lot of situations and a lot of people. And so, uh, you know, being an athlete and um, being a, you know, being a singer, being a performer, um, has helped me in the business world. It's helped me in my, prof- my uh, personal life and on the podcast, you know, so doing the podcast that we do. Uh, so, you know, Dominic uh, Battistella and I, who's also a guest here a lot of times, we have two podcasts that we do. And it's, uh, you know, it, it definitely helps when you're in a group, in a setting with professional athletes and you're like, why am I here? Wait, I never have-, have that. I never have that thought of why am I here? I'm just there. You have two. I know of the Joe Schmo Sports Show. What's the other one? The Liquid Soapbox. Oh. And that's that's Dominic's baby. I didn't so, even realize they were two separate. Yep. I two thought, separate. I yep. thought that one was like a subtitle of the other. Nope. nope. So the Joe Schmo Sports Show and the Liquid Soapbox are available on any podcast network um, and YouTube as well. And uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. But it's like you're sitting in a room with you know a couple of professional athletes. You're just sitting there having drinks and you know a lot of people might sit there and be like wow like who am I to be in this group of people like I'm I'm just I'm just a regular old Joe so to speak right which is why the name of the show but I never have those feelings because it's just like I'm just I'm just having a conversation with someone I'm not having a conversation with somebody famous or you know professional sports star it's just me having a conversation with a friend of mine that's awesome yeah that is so awesome so to check out Clint's podcast with Dominic, who's another rather regular guest of ours. Say him again, Joe Schmo Sports Show. Yes, yeah, the Joe Schmo S- Sports Show, and that's a J M O. Yeah, J O E S C H M O. Okay. Um, and the Liquid Soapbox, which is just like it sounds, available on all all podcast um platforms. And Ray Dominic has also has a speakeasy in his house that is also stocked with liquor and beer and wine. Yes. And good people, including Sarah and Steve. He, he I knew two that. For one. Yep. Two for one. Two for one. On your visit. It's That's better right. than being in California. And we can even record an episode of the Liquid Soapbox with the man in the red Converse from California that sells houses and stuff. That would be amazing. And stuff. That would be amazing. We should definitely do that. Like, we should definitely do that. Right next time you come... 
on to the East Coast, which is the best coast. I know they say the West Coast is the best coast, but I'm claiming it, reclaiming it for the East Coast because we're awesome. So <laughs> you should, next time you come over, you got to let us know and plan a couple days and we're going to do it. Okay, we will do. Good. So reading back through my, the, the chat a little earlier, and I know this is like way retrograding, but Jay asked, what does bated breath smell like? And I'm going to say, you have to ask Shakespeare because I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't even know. Like I've been trying to like uncover the etymology of that term, the bated breath and whether it is like. I mean, B-A-T-E-D or B-A-I-T-E-D, like, you know, who knows? Um, but it's one of my favorite phrases because I love, Bray, do you know? Tell me. Oh, you're muted. Mm, I still can't hear you. Hold on. Why? Why can't I hear you? Oh, you're on mute. That's because I'm still on mute. <laughs> Bated breath, B-A-T-E is right. the correct spelling. Okay. But I don't know the origin of it. <clears throat> I don't know the origin either. Like, but bait, B-A-T-E, I don't, I, I just, I don't know. I'm going to have to go look it up now. And I'm doing it. And down a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, hopefully it smells better than morning breath. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going out to catch something. I'm going to bait my breath. It's going to smell minty and delicious. Right? That's what I'm saying. It's got to smell better than like morning breath after you have baited and then caught and released. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know how to respond to that. Because I don't even, I don't, you know, I keep hearing the phrase, but I don't even know how it's spelled. I wasn't sure. Is it B-A-I-T or B-A-T-E? So now it's B-A-T. So that's solved for me. Okay. okay so now we've, got, go with that, now we've got Joey. Joey. Would you like to, to give us the definition? And then I would love for you to answer the question. Sure. Um, Google says it's just essentially stopped or reduced as like that pause before the next moment of suspense. <laughs> oh, so it's not even the smell. It's the waiting. Yeah. Just like the <gasps> type of moment. That's what comes to my mind when I hear that <laughs> in a suspenseful drama. Is a, um, at least that's what I got from it. So I could be yeah. wrong. <laughs> huh. You know, I was thinking it was, I did not, I didn't, I didn't think it was the, t it was the waiting. That's surprising to me. I would think it was really like the, the tone of, I mean, maybe the tone of breath, maybe like the. <sighs> <laughs> Shortened form of abated. <laughs> that's what i found oh mm -hmm. that makes stop. sense that makes sense okay so it could smell like anything it could be morning breath it could be evening breath it could be minty breath it could be victorian breath which i'm sure smells worse than all of it <laughs> <laughs> those guys were chewing on sticks to brush their teeth so yes you know and blackening them on purpose depending on what part of the world you were in so delicious <laughs> so joey and i know that you are your profession is in nerd no sorry not yes. nerd yes yes <laughs> i thought maybe you would come up with a different word for it but um nerd coaching yeah you fit into the world yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me in more eloquent words exactly what it is <laughs> What I do. Yes. And then tell us how, and I, so, and let that lead into how you were as a kid. Did you fit into a group, which I have a feeling you might have. Yes. If you're a profession now. I did. It all started. These conversations. It and all then started. how does it affect you now? Oh yeah, sure. It all started when I was five years old and I got my first Nintendo 64. Legend of Zelda, Mario, Mario Kart. Those games who you may have played, maybe heard of those things and I was like this this is it I like this so yeah. I before I was five and so I just played those and I was like this is cool I like this wait 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 sorry N64 was before you were five well I got my first one when I was five years old yes I'm 30 yeah, we need not, not talk about that on this <laughs> Joey <laughs> okay 
<laughs> I'm just going to pretend like we are all the same age here. And I'm the youngest of the group. <laughs> so, yes, I just turned 30 in December. <laughs> Happy birthday. So, thank you. So, uh, yeah, that was my first system, my first introduction to video games when I was a young lad. And I loved it. It was great. And I, going in grade school, I didn't fit in with anybody. Hmm. And it was just me and like five other people who also didn't fit in with anybody. So we were the outcasts in a way who just happened to all like video games as well. And that's how the status quo was for a while mm-hmm. until I got to high school. And then in my high school years, uh, emo, punk and scene kids was a thing. And so I was like, that's kind of cool. So I went to that and I gravitated toward it. I didn't fit in with the jocks. I wasn't interested in sports. I didn't hate sports. I just didn't do them (laughs) so and that was the majority of people at my high school so I was with all the um more outcasts once again which I identify with which is just all the people who are in the music art uh, and eventually dated a theater woman in high school and so I got more introduced to that that's a whole nother crowd and it wasn't until um college when I was just like, I'm just gonna do whatever I want. And so my college, I went to school in Asheville. I don't know if any of you have been to Asheville, North Carolina. I highly recommend it. It's very artsy. It is. And so there is a lot of eclectic, interesting interest there. <laughs> yes. And so essentially the college dynamic. Wait, say it were- again, eclectic, interesting interest. Yes, that's the word I use for that. I love that. <laughs> so essentially, there was athletes and non-athletes. And so athletes, you know, they're pretty regimented because they're like 6 a.m. workouts at, on Saturdays. And in college, I was like, that's too much work. <laughs> no, thank you. And the non-athletes were just like, the social dynamics really didn't, they didn't make sense because there was none really, because they're all just a conglomerate of just like artsy people who didn't really fit into any category. So it was like the outcasts of outcasts in a lot of ways. And so I became friends with everybody in a lot of ways. And I, I guess you could say following the theme, like in some ways I did form a chameleon, but even then I didn't fit in with like the ultra artsy people too. Yeah. Cause like my head was in the clouds, but not those type of clouds all the time. <laughs> if that makes sense. So I think the majority of us are with you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't until I went to my first anime convention ooh, that I was just like, I walked into this convention and I just see other nerdy people who were like into then in, um, anime video games, they're dressing up. And I was like, what is this? Brings me back to when I was a child. I was like, I looked at my best friend. I'm like, am I home? <laughs> what is this? And I've been going ever since to many conventions for the years. So to answer your question, initially I was an outcast and I fit in with that group. And that's essentially the type of people that I want to work with. I do work with. And as I leveled up my social skills and my abilities, I realized like, yes, I can talk to anybody now. So I help the outcasts and the people who don't fit into any group be able to speak to other people outside who they are not, if that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I'm still a nerd. Hundred percent. I love it. Now wears a badge of pride and honor <laughs> a lot of ways. So that's me. <laughs> Thank you, Joey. Thank you. And so, you know, I pardon my shock at your first game system being an N64. The first game system that was in my house was an Atari. So <laughs> yeah. hey, I played it. I love it. <laughs> but it wasn't my first. <laughs> it's not even like that big of a difference. It's really only like I don't know, 15 years, maybe uh, 10, 15 years between like when an Atari got passed down from my uncle to when N64 was like new into the, you know, like it. How to shit out there at the time. <laughs> right. 1990 something. <laughs> so I think the N64 came out in, was it 90s? It wasn't oh, the 80s. Gosh. I can tell you that. No, it wasn't the 80s, but I thought it was maybe like 2000. No, it was. No. Well before 2000. No, it was well before. That was like 96, maybe? I remember. <laughs> the power of Google. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> All right. So 96. thank you, Joey. 96. 1996. Oh, I was right. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> I remember it coming into my, oh, see, we have even another generation of gamers. Adam Bricker says Pong. I, Pong. So I remember on the Atari and then the original Nintendo. I remember, and I, my friend had an original Nintendo. I didn't have one at my house. We played the, the duck hunt game. Mm-hmm. Right. And like the stupid, and I would get so mad. And I'm sure this is why the guns never worked because the guns didn't work and you would be shooting at the thing in duck hunt and it wouldn't hit the duck <laughs> and then you'd throw the gun and then it would make it not work more. <laughs> the birth of nerd raging. <laughs> nerd, <laughs> is it a word nerd raging? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right what it means out there slamming the keyboard <laughs> that's the beginning of it it has to be the stupid duck hunt game 100 done that too many times to be. i've broken a couple yeah. controllers in my time <laughs> and, and like the 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 jump pad for nintendo like i don't know if you guys ever had the jump pad where like it was only like i don't know eight yeah, sp- nine spots maybe or six spots or whatever it was yeah it was for the track and field olympic game oh Maddening. yeah Mm-hmm. Maddening. <laughs> I mean, Good, so I cheat jumped. Code, the cheat code was to just get on your hands and just do this. Sure. You know what I mean? So, so, Clint, where were you when I was a kid? I was crazy. jumping. <laughs> I also had the power glove for Mike Tyson. Power glove. And I actually still have that. So, <laughs> you know, okay. So for N64, and then we'll get to Mark because I really want to hear Mark's perspective on this. But for the N64, the thing that blew my mind wasn't, I mean, yes, like Mario world was amazing and you're jumping through pictures and all of that fun stuff. But what really blew my mind was star Fox and it blew my mind in super Nintendo. And it blew my mind more in N64. Like that game. I don't know what that, it's just, whoa, <laughs> like <laughs> mind blowing. It was mind blowing in regular Nintendo because like it was so much more advanced than the other 64 bit. I mean, okay. or the other 18 bit or whatever it is, 8 bit. I don't even know. 32. For Super Nintendo. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Super Nintendo but the 64 bit version of and of of Star Fox was just like I don't know. I could feel my brain like leaking out of my ear as I'm playing that game. Like <laughs> these graphics are so real. I was actually the first. This is so amazing. Yeah, first game I would beat. I beat it like six times in a row. Because that, as a kid, beat Star Fox and six yeah. four Star the, Fox. Okay, you had ever, too much time on your hands, my friend. <laughs> I was out of the time. I had nothing but time. <laughs> <laughs> I played like through like a couple levels of it, and I was like, "Oh, this is dumb." I'm the, I, like, and it's beautiful, but like, it's so frustrating. And it's so hard to land on the damn helicopter pads. Like, I just can't. Yes. <laughs> 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 I can't do it. I tried. So, speaking of generational games. I don't know how that ties into Mark's share, but I'm going to make it tie into Mark's share. Mark, tell me, when you were a kid, what groups did you fit into? Did you play video games? Were there video games? What games did you play? No. What group did you fit into? And mm-hmm. has it changed as you're an adult? And how does it, how did it shape your world? Well, first of all, when I was a kid, there were no video games. Okay. You know. Um, the closest thing to a video game was the football game where you had little guys that rumbled and moved down or the hockey game. That was it. We didn't have video games. Gotcha. But um, before I go, I got one quick question for Adam. Yeah. This is a real question, Adam. I heard that the chief of police of Ottawa resigned today. Do you know anything about that? It is queued up on my other screen to watch when this show is over. But it really and, did happen. Um, I'm gonna watch the video. I don't. I don't know. It. It, it would be one of the best things that I think could have happened. Uh, but I'm. I'm really excited to watch that. But it's queued up right on my other screen. Okay. Good. I, I just want to make sure it wasn't fake news. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. So, um, when I was a kid, I think I we had this discussion a couple back. Um, I was kind of an introvert mm-hmm. and um so when i was you know in the say set five six seven eight nine ten eleven i was kind of hanging out with that small group of nerds 
Then I went through the growth spurt. And by the time I was 15, I was six foot tall. So I stayed friends with all my introvert nerdy friends, but then a lot of people wanted me to play sports or gave me the opportunity to play sports. So then I did like kind of, I don't know if I was so much a chameleon, I was more of an iguana. Ooh. Okay. What's the difference? Well, a chameleon can, a chameleon, iguanas can change colors just like chameleons. Mm-hmm. But um, the iguana is a little bit quicker on its feet than a chameleon. Chameleons oh, I love that. A little, a little bit slower, you know, a little bit more slippery. Iguana is more sturdy and you can hold on to an iguana. Okay. That might be the best analogy I've heard this week. Honestly, okay. I love that. <laughs> so anyway, and, um, and then as I started getting older, I was a firm believer in, to me, an awesome business meeting is talking very little and just listening to what other people tell you. Because when other people talk, they give their tells away or their wants away, then you know exactly what a zero is, right? Yep. You know, so that, that to me is something that definitely a people watcher. And um, I've got some good people watching stories and um, which I'll share with you guys off video. Or you off. play the script game like Jay and I do? Not together, separately, but the script uh, game of what they're saying? We do that. It's fun, but I'll, I'll tell you some good things, some things that are funny that are from the 70s. Ooh. Okay. And um, they're good things. And I will tell you one thing that I thought was hilarious. There's a couple of, of um, TV shows that I enjoy. One of them is a show called Billions. I don't know if anyone watches it or not. Mm -hmm. And did you see this last Sunday's episode? Mm -mm. I saw the, I've seen the first couple of episodes, but I haven't seen, I'm not up to date. Okay. Well, I, anyway, and when I talked to one of my kids about it, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, they do that. And actually, you can push a button and buy that when you watch it on your phone. Okay. So basically, what they were doing was billions, for those of you that don't know, is basically about very high end financial world hedge funds in New York and the people that work there and all the interesting little ways that deals happen. And so they had on this last one, they had the people that worked there and they, in the very beginning of the show, they said, okay. And then they went ding, 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 ding. And it showed you like everything that they had on them, you know, where their suit came from, where their shirt came from, where their shoes came from, where their little bracelets came from. Up, 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 up. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then when I talked about it to, you know, my kids are adults, they said, yeah, yeah. If you watch that on your phone, they, they've been doing that for a while. And then you can pop that and all that could take you to the website to buy it. You can't do that on the television. I go, yeah, but it was, it was pretty interesting because I stopped it just to watch what, and, you know, for a, a minute or two to look at everything on seven or eight characters. It was very, very interesting. It was very, very interesting. So I thought I enjoyed that as, as a sidebar. <laughs> but, um, but back to the friend groups, like I said, I was an introvert growing up, you know, I was, you know, young was able to transition because I got, you know, more I, people wanted me to play sports and I did because I was good at it, I guess. I wasn't great, but, you know, I was good. What sports did you play? Well, I play, I was a swimmer. I played football. What was your stroke when you're swimming? I was pretty much an all around swimmer, you know, freestyle, did the medley, which was free back, blast and um, butterfly. Um, so I was actually a really good swimmer and um, football went to a smaller, small school. And we were actually, I think it was 74. We were the number one two A school in the country. And we played in the first annual mango bowl in Puerto Rico, where we played the best Puerto Rican team. It was pretty fun. They did that at the Shriners put it on. And it was at the old air force bases where they had the stadium and very interesting experience. You they played over Thanksgiving, so you stayed with the player's family whose position you played in Puerto, you know, 
who was on the other team. So pretty interesting cross-cultural experience. But I enjoyed that. But anyway, so back to growing up. And then once I got older, like I said, I'm an iguana. I can change colors pretty quickly and I'm pretty sturdy, so and I'm fast, so I don't get caught, you know, with my pants down too often. <laughs> and there you go. That's awesome. Thank you, Mark. Um, I so I've you know my my assessment. I think I've I've we've talked to everybody, right? Yes. Okay. So my assessment, I think, is. That's true. You got to watch for falling iguanas when it gets cold in Miami. They fall out of trees. Yeah. <laughs> it's a um, animation. Right. So my assessment is correct. Like we all are of the a similar ilk where we didn't fit into any one in particular. Like I was never <laughs> kids. I was in art class. I was a swimmer. My stroke was butterfly, but that was only because I was so competitive that the only way I could go to the meets that counted was to swim butterfly because nobody wanted to swim it. I wasn't even that good at it. I just, (laughs) I didn't like to like not be counted. And so I was like, if I'm going to put the effort in, I'm going to do the hard thing because at least like my name gets on the board, (laughs) which is, you know, I don't know. That's a, a character trait, I guess, but I'm so glad to know that there are so many of us who fit in together because we didn't fit in anywhere else. Right. And I, I am one of those where we, I just, I didn't, I had like in, in school, I had friends that were, didn't go to my school. Like I associated kind of with people who went to my school, but many more of my friends didn't go to my school and they were like, outside my schools. I didn't socialize with the people I went to school with because something told me if you hang out with these people that you go to school with, they're going to say things about you that you don't want the rest of the school to know, (laughs) whether that's good or bad or indifferent, right? Like, I mean, and I grew up, I mean, I went to high school here in Raleigh. um, So I was, and I graduated from Wakefield in the first class that came out of Wakefield, but I was friends with people at Sanderson and Millbrook and Southeast Raleigh and like all these other schools who were just, and I had met by chance through other people. And like, I didn't really hang out with anybody from my school and I didn't swim for this school here. I swam when I was at the schools that I was at before. So like, I wasn't even in art in athletics when I was here, but I should have kept at it. (laughs) I should have kept at it. But like, funny enough, now as an adult, having swam as a kid, I when I go, when I decide like, oh, I'm going to go get fit, I go get in the pool and I go and swim for like an hour, <laughs> you know, cause it's like the easiest, I mean, it's the easiest fitness you can do. There's no resistance. Like you just swim and then till you get tired and you're good, you grab a kickboard, you do some kicks, you're good. It's like all your muscle groups and there's no impact on your knees. Or your I'm telling my age, there's no impact on your knees, no impact on your back. <laughs> like, it's just easier. But um, I'm so grateful that all of us are are of the same milk because I think that's why we get along so well together. And I think that's why we have these such great conversations each week. And I appreciate you guys being with us each week because it is um, it's so lovely to hear you and so lovely to see you. And I'm just really grateful for your time and energy that you spend with us every Tuesday. Like. Thank you. Jay, I think I just took your spot. I think I just took your spot. Really, you know what? Well done, Sarah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. So this hosting wasn't as hard as I thought it was, and maybe I'll do it again. I think you should. I think maybe that'll be fun. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being with us. We will see you next week. Um, have a fabulous week. Meet some new people. Enjoy some new things. And come over to the bar if you want to come have a drink. I'm talking about all of you. Like, come on. Stephen's not contagious anymore. He's rested. <laughs> come on. I'm coming for the King George. I know. I know. Okay. When we open that, I will let you know. Because it's going to have to be, like, something amazing. June. Like, yeah. June? Well, Adam will be there. So it'll be amazing. So I'll be there for that. 
Right. So, yeah, that's for sure. And Ray's traveling across country, so I would come to see Ray. Good. Yeah. We're going to have to get it all in together because, like, it's, it's, it's a finite bottle. But we're gonna have to like. I mean, there's only so much in the bottle, right? So we have to get everybody together and have a sip. I'm very excited about it. Rockstar Connect live in person. That's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, and you know, we person. have to put that out on camera. Like, we're gonna have to set up microphones. We're gonna have to get it on camera. We're gonna have to get it recorded. So there's gonna be some gold in those conversations. Urban sip and brunch. That's not. Ooh, so- trademark it. Register it. I love it. We're doing it. Yeah. The bourbon sip and brunch bunch. Oh. We're doing it. I bourbon love it. Babylon. Bourbon. Now King George's Scotch, right? That's Scotch. scotch. We, don't, we don't care. It's a whiskey. Scotch. Yeah. It's a scotch. It's got an E. King it's a George whiskey is... with an E. Yeah. A whiskey. Whiskey with an E. King Y'all have whiskey a great with an E. Sarah's with H's, Sarah's with no H's, whiskey with E's, whiskey with no E's. Who's to say? It's all good. It's all good, Sarah. You were awesome today. Thank you. I I can only be awesome with you guys' support. Like, that's the only way. That's the only way. If I were sitting here talking to my camera about myself, I would be tripping over my words. So thank you. You were great. Thanks for joining me. I love you guys. I appreciate your time. Have a fabulous week. We will talk to you soon. Ciao.